now we're going to go on to the different love relationships. And there are six types of relationships that we're going to look at. But first, what does love mean? What is love? It's a very hard word to define. And depending on the culture, um, it could vary. But the first thing we're looking for is a closeness. And that's something that we can't really define. You just feel connected to somebody. How do you, you get that? It, it's just there or it's not. It's difficult to get. Next is caring. You care about each other. You value each other's feelings. There's an intimacy. You want to relate to one another. You want to get to know each other. You want to be the person who um, they know the most and you know the most about them. And then there's some kind of passion. Somebody who just kind of excites you. You're excited to see them. You're excited when they call you. There's this, this I guess, severe emotion that you experience. Of course, positive, not negative. And then there's a commitment where you say, okay, it's just going to be you and I. Without those things, you don't really have a love relationship. The six types of love that we're going to look at, and uh, these would really cover all types of love relationships. The first is Eros, and this is basically dealing with beauty and sexuality, which means first and foremost, it's love at first sight. You see them and they are so physically attracted to you that you fall in love with them. And these are kind of those, I would say, more um, immature types of relationships because there's not a whole lot more foundation to the relationship other than they look great. I remember um, years and years ago when I first met my husband, somebody said, well, what was it about him that drew you in? And I said, well, he's just very good looking. And I felt so silly saying that because really that was what brought us together. There was nothing else to it. But of course, when you're in your early 20s, that's about all you're looking for. You don't require much more unless you're very mature. And I certainly wasn't at the time. The next type of love relationship is Ludus, and that's where you're really looking for somebody who's going to provide entertainment. They're exciting. They like to go out to the clubs. They like to party, and you are just wowed by them. You'll see a lot of celebrity celebrity relationships are built around Ludus, and it's just because they are just so wrapped up in the entertainment lifestyle and the excitement of it all that they end up falling in love for a very short time usually, but that's what it's built on, the entertainment and the excitement. Then you have the storage love, and that's peaceful and slow. We often will see this in more um, long-term relationships, and this type of love is really based on um, companionship, somebody who they can share interests and activities with. So again, very calm, somebody you can go on walks with, you can go to the movies with, and, and kind of enjoy these activities. And it's also kind of more of a gradual. It's slowly and gradual, so you're not rushing into anything. It's very a slow progression. The next is pragma, and this is a very pragmatic type of love. You're more interested in their personal qualities. Will this person be able to satisfy my needs and desires? Will they earn a good living? Living? Can this person cook? Will they be a good mother? Will they be a good father? Are they going to be able to give me the lifestyle that I want? Next is mania, and this is extreme highs and lows. This is, oh my God, I love you so much, and oh my God, I hate you. Um, oh my gosh, we're going to be together forever. I'm going to die without you. And it's this roller coaster of emotions. Of course, it's obsessive, and it's very possessive. And usually these types of relationships make us feel very badly at the end of the day, even with the highs really there it's it's a hard love to maintain because it is so extreme and last but not least is agape love this one is very difficult to maintain and to even grasp it it is the type of 
love where you will do anything for the other person. You are completely selfless. All that matters is that other person and you will serve them and give everything to them. You're extremely compassionate. Uh, if we if we think about people in history, we're probably thinking of Jesus, Gandhi, people that were just so over the top with compassion and selflessness that we can't even possibly get there. Love is a combination of those six types. We can see all of those different types of love at probably different stages. And that's the case here. If we look at what um, Mr. Duck said, not Steve Duck, actually. I know him. I've met him. He was at San Diego State with uh, another one of the researchers that's in your textbook. And a lot of what he discovered in his research is that the first stage, you have the Eros, the Mania, and the Ludus. And that's that initial attraction. That's that, wow, what do we have here? It's exciting. This person is attractive, and I am on top of the world. So that's the first stage. And then the second stage is more the slow progression. The relationship really kind of solidifies. And then in the third stage, pragma, we start really saying, okay, these bonds are developing because we're meeting each other's needs. And that's on page 265, a very interesting look at how love changes across the relational stages. And then last but not least, your personality is going to very heavily weigh on what type of love you have. Um, I'm a pretty um, intense person, so mania love is something that, you know, my husband and I have endured for, for many, many years. It's, it's less now than it was, but we're both very intense. We over-communicate, talk too much, share too much probably, um, but it's worked for us. We've been able to, to maintain it to a certain extent. Love and communication. How does our communication change when we're in love? Well, we exaggerate each other's virtues and we minimize each other's faults, which means really we protect their positive face. When we're around them um, in groups with other couples, we will say how wonderful they are. We will not tell others about all of their shortcomings because that would be the opposite of being in love. However, you've seen a trend that most often now, even on TV, if you look at those shows, that are popular right now. You'll see a, a husband maybe going out with his buddies and complaining about his wife. And then you see the wife going out with her friends and complaining about her husband. That is not beneficial to a love relationship. In fact, it breaks down the love that you have for one another, especially when it's done in front of the other person. When we're in love, we're going to share emotions and experiences. So if you're becoming disconnected and you're telling your, your wife or your husband less about how you feel. You're telling your boyfriend or your girlfriend less about your daily experiences. There's a breakdown there and you're not really showing the love related communication that you should. We would share secrets. We wouldn't want to keep those. Create personal idioms. These are pet names. Inside jokes is what these would be. I know my husband have a million of them. Um, we're big Dane Cook fans. He's a comedian. Um, and he has a bit where they're at the movies and he goes up to the concession stand and he's ordering all of these ridiculous things for his girlfriend that she asked him to say. And one of the things he says is, no, I, I just want the cheese. I don't want the nachos. I just want the cheese. And there's times when my husband and I will be out and he'll just look at me and he'll say, just the cheese. And I say, just the cheese. And people look at us like we're crazy, but that's our personal idiom. That's our inside joke that we really think is hilarious. I know it's weird, but we find a connection in those kinds of silly things. We also engage in significant self-disclosure. So I don't come home and just tell my husband, yeah, I graded some papers today and some students were upset and so I had to talk to them and that was about it. I tell him, this is how I felt when I was talking to this student and I'm just not sure if I explained it well enough and I just don't know how to connect with this student and, and help them through this difficult time and, and those types of things and gosh, you know, am I compassionate enough and am I fair enough and am I clear enough? Am I doing these students justice in, in terms of um, teaching them? 
And, and that significant self-disclosure, not just the surface level, but how do I feel about things? How am I experiencing things? And then non-verbally, I'm going to communicate my love. I'm going to hug. I'm going to kiss. I'm going to put my arm around somebody. I'm going to look at them. I'm going to admire them. All of those things non-verbally will send a message to the other person that I love them. All important things to do.